central and Kurdish regional government in Iraq have locked horns once again over a running disagreement. It centers around KRG's right to export barrels of crude oil, made all the worse by the collapse of the revenue-sharing deal struck between both governments last year. Kurdish representatives from Erbil yesterday fiercely defended the sale of oil from northern Iraq without central government approval. Baghdad's inability to pay Kurds for exporting oil and its fast deteriorating budgetary crisis have inspired greater acts of defiance on the part of the KRG. The livelihood of the Kurdish people is the frequently cited motive for the autonomous regional government's pursuit of what it describes as alternative yet legitimate solutions. Despite various efforts to obstruct Kurdish oil sales, these have all failed and given KRG greater reason to continue acting separately from Baghdad. The past year alone witnessed a boost in independent Kurdish crude oil exports, International news agency Reuters stated that in 2014, at least nine barrels of oil carried in 11 tankers have been sold from the Turkish oil terminal in Jehan. That number has crept up to almost 40 million barrels transported through tankers across the Mediterranean Sea, which has become somewhat of a common sight. The profits, as a new Reuters report has shown, are pocketed by shadowy buyers, which have included Israel and Syria. This, the KRG believes, is a right the Kurdish government is at liberty to exercise, while analysts describe it as part of the gradual move towards independence. Kurdish officials have shrugged off accusations of this sort. Meanwhile, Baghdad continues to issue rhetorical warnings against those it believes are playing with fire, as Deputy Prime Minister Sharistani cautioned in June last year. <laughs> It was a victory celebrated by Iraq's armed forces and allied militias as a golden triumph. Human Rights Watch describes the ensuing scenes of the battle in Tikrit as a ruinous aftermath. These satellite images capture the scale of destruction on civilian properties after militiamen working under the Popular Mobilization Forces umbrella marched into Salahuddin province to expel the Islamic State group. This was not all. A 60-page report published by Human Rights Watch reveals criminal intent inspired many of their actions, which the rights group explicitly labels violations of the laws of war. The bona fide militia units that now form a certified segment of Iraq's security apparatus promise not only justice, but also revenge. This involved killings, the destruction of civilian homes, and unlawful detention of scores of Sunnis. They sought to avenge the hundreds of soldiers the Islamic State group killed in the infamous Camp Spica massacre. An orchestrated act of collective punishment is how the report describes the militia response. 160 out of the 200 men they kidnapped remain missing and their families fear that they might well be dead. The pretext on which these crimes stand is the need to purge largely Sunni inhabited villages of residents who militias claim are ISIS or Ba'athist agents and sympathisers. They are praised by the government as the antithesis to the Islamic State group and as heroic victors, but these Iranian-backed militias have escaped unscathed from the crimes their hands are stained by. As the report's findings echo, the laws of war prohibit deliberate destruction of the adversary's property and the arrest of scores of people yet to be found guilty. Their actions have fallen on deaf ears as Baghdad continues to extend its hand in asking for increased financial and logistical support from America. Remnants of the militia campaign of looting and destruction have continued, it seems, as it trickles into other parts of the country that is teetering on the edge of collapse.